Good morning, folks. Hi to everybody. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, yeah, so I'm out walking my puppies this morning. You might see them in the background over there. Right there. Uh, we're more like they're walking me. <laughs> uh, great name, puppies. But yeah, I'm out letting them burn off some energy and such. And we're out. We like to walk under the canopy and, and uh, sniff and do dog things. And anyway, I found quite the unique find this morning. And I thought I'd share it with you. I thought you guys might be interested. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you. Alrighty, let me see if I'm finding a good position to get in here where we're not in our light. You see this this interesting looking critter right here, or fellow? That is the elegant, and I kid you not, it's called the elegant stink horn. Stink horn. Like stinky. Go on, Lucy. Declan, come here. Hang on. Come here, babies. Come on. Come on. Ruining my shots. <laughs> this is called the elegant stink horn. And uh, I'll put its proper name down in the uh, rickety rack below. But yeah, this is this is a fungi. In its early stages, it's actually considered edible. I've never ate this, so disclaimer: I wouldn't I wouldn't go for it. They say in this um, adult state, it's not exactly poisonous, but it's just extremely foul. This thing smells horrendous, uh, and I'll get to that in just a second. But um, they said these are known to have pathogens that are uh, humans can uh, that are contagious to humans that we can pick up. Um, so yeah, so you might want to avoid eating it unless it was like a dire situation. I guess technically you could if it's if you're gonna kill over anyway from starvation. Maybe you want to try it. But yeah, as I was saying, it's got this nasty green like sludge. If you can see that, it. Um, that serves a purpose, that stink attracts flies. And unlike a lot of mushrooms that have gills on the bottom that depend on the air to blow the spores, the, uh, the stink horn, or the devil's, uh, let's see, what are they? The devil's dipstick, they call it the devil's dipstick. Um, it, it uses that stinky mess there to attract flies. The flies land on it, they feast a little bit, and then when they fly off, and do the rest of their business, wherever their little feet and bodies touch, they spread the spores that way. These are considered a nuisance plant. People hate them. They go through drastic lengths to eradicate them. So, you know, some people consider them a pest because they stink and they uh, attract flies. My dog is eating a stick. <laughs> anyway, so they they say that they're not necessarily a problem for your animals or humans, well, they're because they're not technically poisonous. But again, in this state, they're not really considered edible. In their early stages, when they're more white looking, apparently they're edible. And in some places you can find them in like Asian markets and stuff. But uh, yeah, I thought it was really neat. I mean, look at that guy. That is, I don't eat a lot of wild mushrooms besides um, morels, but I just enjoy finding them. Like, you know, kind of collecting them uh, mentally. These dogs are wild this morning. But yeah, apparently, uh, you know, they call it the devil's dipstick because, well, I mean, back when they named a lot of these things, they had a lot of lure around them, you know, a lot of su uh, superstition. I mean, they put cocaine in everything. So, <laughs> you know, but yeah, uh, they had a lot of, you know, negative connotation around a lot of um, uh, bad superstition and bad juju. But, um, yeah, so apparently Charles Darwin, and I can't remember where I read this, but apparently his eldest daughter, I can't remember her name right now, took a, a, a especially like a deep-seated offense to them. And she would like go out in the woods and use her nose to sniff them out because they do smell foul. And would like take a spear and spear these mushrooms and throw them in her basket. And then she would take them home and then burn them to get rid of the uh, bad spirits and, you know, kind of purge... Uh, purge the forest of, of their evil foul doing. But just kind of an interesting little uh, tidbit of information. The more you know, right? Now you got something to tell somebody this week. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thank you for joining me today. I was hoping to get a more robust video out for you today, and I still might. It's early in the week. I've got some things up my sleeve. Well, not this sleeve, but uh, yeah, I've had um, these guys got spayed and neutered, and they're big puppies, so uh, got to stay right on them to make sure they don't bust their stitches. And then right at the end of that, um, my boss uh, had a medical emergency, so we're all pitching together. I work for a little small, uh, little small company with very few employees, and we're all pitching together to cover his hours. 
to help out that way. So every time I get ready to start a big project, something comes up. But bear with me, uh, and I will. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get to some full adventures videos here soon. So again, thank you for supporting me. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you again next time. Oh yeah, one more thing. I was curious. Do any you guys know about this dude right here? Ever heard of Falk, Arkansas? This is uh, the Beast of Boggy Creek or the Legend of Boggy Creek. There was a movie made about it. If you know anything about him, put him down in the little uh, ricky rack down, rickety rack down below. And we'll talk about it next time.